Okay, what this is illustrating here, if you look back here at the LED, you notice that it's getting brighter and dimmer, go coming on and going off. And you notice the LCD display is telling you when it's coming on and when it's going off. This just demonstrates the uh, pulse width modulation using wiring pi on the Raspberry Pi. With, well, the Raspberry Pi is off to your la left. And the LCD display is one of the I2C types that I'm also going to go over the programming in it. All these programs are written in C. Um, yeah, these are written in C. The LCD program is not written in wiring pi, but then again, the P pulse width modulation on the LED is. So this is really part of two separate projects, which I'll explain with web pages and of course this video. Alright, let's start exploring pulse width modulation using Wiring Pi. Wiring Pi uses an Arduino type programming language to program the Raspberry Pi GPIO. Here I'll explore how this is used and how it differs on Arduino. Our main focus here is going to be pulse width modulation. To control the intensity of an LED. Pulse width modulation in Arduino, and there's several pins that will produce this, is 8 bits. That's 0 to 255. But in the case of the Raspberry Pi, it's a 10 bit with a value from 0 to 1023. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, pins 1 and 26 seem to be the same thing as far as pulse width modulation. Uh, if I program uh, pin 1 for pulse width modulation, it also turns it on on pin 26. I'm not sure why this is, but if you look at the connector listing, which we will see in a moment, both are marked PWM0. All right. Wiring Pi is native to the newest versions of Raspbian. So download Raspbian, burn yourself an SD a miniature SD card, and you're ready to go. Only other thing you have to worry about is while Ra Arduino is 5 volts, the Raspberry Pi GPIO is 3.3 volts, and that holds the same for a pin 1 and pulse width modulation. The advantage of this is this is being written in low level C and it has to be compiled. If a program is written in C at a low level, it's faster and more efficient and you can get a greater deal of control over the program. If you're going to write this, then I would suggest using Gainey under Linux. After all, Raspberry Pi, if you've got Raspbian, is Linux. To get it, just type in from a terminal sudo apt-get install gainy-plugins. Wiring Pi was developed by Gordon Henderson. Thank you, Gordon. And you deserve full credit for this great idea. Here is the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 GPIO connector. Remember, when using Wiring Pi, if you're going to do a, if you're going to program pin one, it's going to be pin one as stated here, which in reality is connector pin two or GPIO one. If you look here in the connector diagram, it says PWM zero. But if you go down here as well on pin 26, you will see that it is also PWM zero. And there is a PWM1. Yeah, it's down here on 24. There is a PWM1, and I believe it's somewhere else as well. Um, nonetheless, we're only concerned here with GPIO1. This is a hardware pulse width modulation circuit. It's internal hardware, as I understand, in the controller chip itself. The 
and you are limited to the, these pins. If you want um, pulse width modulation out on other pins, it can be done in the software, but I don't think that's a very good method. One method we'll look at later on is get a is to get an add-on board that we can write to and let it do the pulse width modulation. All right, let's look at the software now. This is going to be a regular real-world C program, not this Python stuff. You have to include these libraries, standardio.h, wiringpy.h, standardlib.h. You have to have an integer return, main, which is void, and this is your opening brace. We're going to print a little message that says wiring Raspberry Pi, wiring Pi, PWM test program. You will see this on the terminal when you hit execute. We have to set up wiring Pi setup, and it's going to check um, to see if it's going to be a negative one. If it returns a negative one, that means something failed in the setup and the program will exit at that point and it will say exit with code one. Until you find out what your programming problem is, it won't work. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got to run in root. That's the main thing that will nail you every time. If you're not in root, the uh, setup won't work. All right, I moved a bit down the uh, page. The first thing is going to be different from Arduino is you're going to, we're going to set the pin mode to pin one, but you won't see this in the Arduino program. You'll have to set up pin one as PWM underscore output. This is a little different than you're just doing. This is not as it is in Arduino where you do an analog write command. Now we just have a for loop that's going to simply, for instance, it's going to count up. It's going to count up from 0 to 1,023, writing that value to uh, pin 1. It's a variable called num. It's going to delay one millisecond, so the LED will get bright. Here, it will stay on for a second. That's delay 1,000. Then it will do just the opposite. It will start from 1,023 and go down to 0, delay a second. And because this is a for loop, it'll just keep going round and around and around. Um, down here, you got return zero, and that's your closing brace. And that's the whole program. Not a lot to it. It would be nice if you had more uh, pulse width modulation channels. I do have an idea about that, but I'll save that for another video. So go ahead, um, observe the video as it follows here and give this a try it'll give you an idea of increasingly the power of the uh, raspberry pi and the wiring pi program makes life a lot easier thanks for listening and then visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com